Hello everyone, this is Shauna here and I hope you'll join me in my kitchen here on Love in the Pie as I show you how I execute a personal chef service. Let's do this. I happen to be a personal chef and a chef by trade and I've worked in many aspects of the culinary field. So today I am prepping to create a meal for a personal chef client. Personal chef service pretty much is a week's worth of food that has been customized according to that person's needs, dietary um, preferences and so forth. So whatever they request, I try my best to make it happen within the budget. So um, I am working on a plan, which I call a three by five plan. And this essentially means that they'll be getting one meal per person for five days out of the week. And in this case, there's a household of three. So that'll be three meals a day for five days, which will give them 15 meals. So it's quite a bit of work. Um, since I'm a stay-at-home mom now, to make it feasible for myself, I've split that work up. I shop one day, and then the next day I prepare. So, um, before I begin, I must first prepare my kitchen. And this is something you should do when you're making your ordinary meals at home. Certainly not to this extent, but I have prepared my kitchen so that I can work multiple stations without cross-contaminating and so on. So, I'm gonna rotate the camera so you can see. I have here some sanitizing wipes. They're great to have on hand. Clean all my counter surface and then sanitize. Gloves readily available. I've washed my herbs and veggies. I have my prep bowls out and those items are not touching the wall. It looks like it, but it's not. Um, this area is for prepping herbs. And then I have a counter surface here that's been wrapped right next to the sink where I'm gonna be prepping my raw meat. I have my other components that I'll be working with behind the counter space that I'm working in. My sink area, I've only left the essentials that I might need and I'm about to fabricate chicken. So I have a trash bag there and then there's my chicken that I'm about to a butterfly. I have some boiling water ready to blanch. A blanching is a quick a flash cooking process where you're not really fully cooking the item, you're really um, par cooking it. Um, if you're doing green vegetables like broccoli, you could certainly make your money go further. If you purchase the heads of broccoli and cut them down yourself, you'll get bigger, prettier florets and you can make the stems longer. I use my stems and the big hunk, you can grate it for slaw. For the blanching process, you will need to have hot boiling water, the little pinch of salt, or you put that item in there, you will need to have a bowl of ice cold water so that it can be submerged and shocked. So with something that's quick cooking like broccoli or cauliflower, I will blanch it for about 45 seconds to a minute or just until it turns vibrant green. You want the water to be at a rolling boil before you put it in. And once you put it in, the temperature's gonna drop and it's not gonna be boiling anymore, but it's hot enough to do the job. So once it turns bright green, um, either strain it, in this case, here are all my kitchen gadgets and such as you can see my prep has continued and I will tell you more about that in a moment but I have my utensils readily available that I use on hand um, this is called a spider and I will use the spider to fish out my broccoli into the ice water because I'm going to use that water again to blanch some potatoes you, if you have a day in your week where you have a little wiggle room, you could do a few things like this to kind of give yourself some ahead prep time. And then when the week is busy, kids are in school, you're working or, you know, your day gets chaotic, you have options that can cook quicker. So that's going to cut my cook time almost in half. So I'm going to blanch my potatoes, not until they're done I'm, I'm not really going to be blanching them i guess i should say for the hard vegetables in this case i'm going to partially cook it so after i blanch my broccoli i'm going to partially cook my potatoes not until they're done but you know just probably halfway there and then i will uh rinse them under cold water until they've cooled then i'm going to let them bake in the oven with oil and herbs and so forth and they will get a nice crispy buttery flaky texture so a couple of chef tricks there for you but back to my setup i have my station here i have to utilize 
other corners in my house for this. Um, I've cleaned and sanitized this area and I just have my extra pans that I'm gonna be using readily available. I have tasting spoons, I can taste some trash, my oils are there, all my seasonings that I intend to use are out open and available. And before I handle my raw meats, I like to use paper bowls for the raw meats. I'm gonna make my little spice blend because I always you know, make my own concoction. And then after I season that meat, I can throw it away, wash up, and I haven't contaminated my workstation. And then as you see here, I have other items I'm gonna be using, stock, uh, broth, I guess, um, and other components. I have my mixer, I'm making whipped potatoes. I let the mixer do the work for me. So I'm gonna be multitasking and doing a multitude of things. And I just thought I'd show you how I begin. Let's do this. I'm just gonna show you how to butterfly a whole chicken. This is a really quick and easy and cost effective meal. Um, you can feed a family of six or more with one chicken. And um, to speed up the cook time, I like to butterfly it. And all we're gonna do is take the backbone out. So I have a trash bag. I put the wrappings that came off the chicken in there. I try to get a chicken that um, doesn't have the antibiotics and preservatives and so forth in it. I'm gonna begin by removing the innards. They all come with the gizzards and the, t the neck and so forth. You can boil these down to make broth, but save time, I won't be doing that today. But you can certainly uh, make use of it. We'll remove all the innards. Some of the chickens have them in a little baggie, which makes it more easy. Rinse it clean, make sure there are no feathers and such on your chicken. Try not to rip the skin. Okay, so now I'm gonna clean it up. I have a low stream of water running. I have preferred gloves to do this to reduce cross contamination. Once I'm done, I'm gonna fully clean my sink with some sanitizing solution, um, wash my hands and put any utensils that I might have used in the dirty area so that I do not cross contaminate. So now we're going to return to the chicken. As you can see here, I flipped it over and the back is exposed. I prefer to use kitchen shears with this. You want a good quality pair that's gonna be pretty sharp. And we're just gonna flip them over and work from the tail. And we're gonna cut along the spine on both sides. This is so easy, y'all. And, and butterflying it simply means we're opening it up. So it's, it's a pretty much a duplicate pattern on both sides. And it is going to make cooking time more even and it will cook faster. You could roast it off first and then make your broth and it will be more flavorful. Okay, so I'm gonna clean it up, get any remnants I left behind, and I'm actually gonna just lightly trim the excess of the rib cage so nobody gets poked. You don't wanna go down too far because you want it to kind of be slightly elevated. Okay. Now I'm going to remove any excess fat that I don't want. And you want the water on a low stream so you do not splash. You want to reduce splashing so you can reduce cross-contamination. And like I said, I'm gonna clean this whole area when I'm done. Okay, and from this point, you can clean your chicken however you choose, with lemon juice, so on, whatever process you normally do. Back with my clean chicken. Um, I have a blend that I've already prepared. It's half butter, half olive oil, and then I've seasoned it with fresh herbs. I put rosemary, fresh minced garlic, and cloves. I also put chopped thyme, chopped parsley, salt, pepper, garlic powder, and some other seasonings. I'm doing this like a beer can style chicken, um, but since I butterflied it, the beer can won't be under it, steaming it like on the grill. So we're just gonna infuse that into the broth that I like to cook it in and keep it moist. So now I'm gonna have my chicken and flip it over. I am going to remove one glove and use my seasoning spice mix. And I'm also gonna pour some beer first to get that in the flesh.
I had a napkin available just in case I needed to dry the skin before rubbing the butter, but it seems to be dry enough. Rub it on nicely. If you find that um, when you get to the outer area, you're gonna take that excess that's on your gloves and rub it all over the skin. But if the skin is too um, wet, sometimes that butter mixture won't stick to it, you just pat it dry. And I already have napkins available so I don't cross contaminate. So I'm just gonna take the excess butter and massage it into the wing, get into those crevices. And now we're gonna take these wings and tuck them. And what this is going to do is it's going to allow them, everything to kind of sort of cook around the same time because it will be compact. Before we do that though, I am going to season the wing area. And I removed my gloves nursing style where you stick your finger in and roll it down so I didn't actually touch the soil area on the brush. So I'm just seasoning the wing area really so I can get down in there. And we'll give the whole bird a re-seasoning. So now I'm just going to take this little flap and tuck it underneath the breast and repeat on both sides. Straighten up the skin. This is going to be the final presentation once it cooks and crisps. Pull this down. Protect the breast. Okay. So now I'm going to finish seasoning, wash up, and bake it, and I'll show you the finished product. About to show you the final steps. So as I said, this is going to be like beer can style. So I'm re-seasoning the outside. And then I'm gonna take about a half a beer and carefully pour it around the pan to prevent splashes because you can actually drink the rest that's left. And now I'm going to put some chicken stock or chicken bone broth. And this is just going to help the chicken stay juicy as it bakes on the underside and then on the top side it will be able to brown and crisp nicely because it has that butter and olive oil blend on the top. Depending on how hot your oven gets, you can bake it on the lowest rack. And then I'll check it in about 40 minutes and start basting. Once the skin has gotten that nice golden crispy color, then I'll just monitor to make sure we're not overcooking it. If you need to drop the temperature, you can drop it down to 325, but you want your chicken to cook to an internal temperature of 185 degrees. I recommend you get a meat thermometer. A digital thermometer is even better, that's what I have. So, if you want to check it, it is in between there where the wing and the breast meat on the underside, and then you want to check where the thigh joint area is. So likely in the thigh area here, and make sure you're not hitting a bone. You wanna make sure you're not hitting the surface of the pan because you wanna read the meat temperature and not the pan temperature. And if you're making a meal ahead of time for your family, you can halfway cook it. Put it in a little foil pan with some boiled potatoes that have been seasoned, and then that can be cooled properly and you can bake it to finish another day, like on a Friday going into Saturday. Ah. Here's the final personal chef meal service that I did. I have a whole roasted butterfly chicken with um, caramelized Brussels sprouts and mushrooms. I have a separate side that they ordered of lemon, garlic, asparagus with Swiss chard. And here I have chicken and dumplings with roasted butternut squash and kale hash seared Thai trout with uh, red curry coconut sauce and zucchini noodles. Chicken roulade made with chicken breast stuffed with goat cheese, arugula, and sun-dried tomato. A rendition of beef stroganoff, but instead of the noodles, I have mashed potatoes. It's loaded with mushrooms, as you can see here. I like to garnish my meals with what's inside. 